Hey everyone, a little bit of a Jen life update here. So for those of you who don't know, Jen is learning German. She flies to Germany all the time. She has a stepson there and she wants to be able to speak with the locals even better than she already does. So to speak better when she goes to Germany, she's using Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. So I want to do a little check-in with her. Jen, how's it going? Okay, when I started this Babbel journey, I thought to myself, this is going to be what I need to like reignite my German practice. Boy, was I right. The best part about it is before when I first started learning German, I was doing like two hour classes at a time. These are 15 minute lessons. I can actually fit this into my life and do it every day. And I think it's better because I'm practicing my language every single day instead of like two times for a bunch of hours a week. It's like a little bit every day and it really helps. Babbel lessons were created with real language experts rather than AI. This is not like you're feeling like you're talking to a robot or playing games with a robot. It really feels like the way you would speak if you were speaking to a local. And it's not just German. That's what I'm learning, obviously. There's Spanish, French, Italian, 14 different languages. There's speech recognition technology, which is really cool. So like if my pronunciation is bad, the app tells me. It knows that like, oh girl, you're going to go to Germany and talk like that? No <laughs> one's going to understand you. Babbel's really getting me to sound much more like a local. And there are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to the lessons that I told you about, you can access podcasts, games, video stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code FATMascara. That's Babbel.com, code FATMascara. B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code FATMascara. Hello, hello. Welcome to Fat Mascara. I'm Jess. I'm Jen. And I'm tired. Okay, listen. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not caffeinated today. Okay, your dog is in the back with ears just perked up because I think he, he heard knows. me say tired. So he's like, we're going to bed. We're going to cuddle. Oh, I think he perked up because he, he knows that you and I were like just like about to rage. I wouldn't say it's rage. Rant and rage. You know what I would say? You know when we started this podcast and we were like, this is great. We'll be on a weekly news cycle so we can really have both in-depth conversations and yet keep it more timely than we were when we were at monthly magazines. <laughs> and the past four weeks, the news cycle in beauty is not even weekly. It's, it's every not five even minutes. daily. It's freaking hourly. It's like and everything's a controversy, and everything's got a new name and a trend-driven article that somebody threw together in 30 minutes. And all of it is things that I want to weigh in on, but I want to, like, think first. And the one that's coming to mind, and the reason I'm getting, like, this is I even started here, was, like, ever since the Michaela Nogueira mascara scandal, it's just been this rolling down the hill of one after the other things happening, moving right into the de-influencing oh moment that we're in. So for those of you who like don't read these trend articles that I do, de-influencing being the idea of somebody on your social media who it considers themselves an influencer instead of trying to get you to buy a product. Considers or themselves is like the the fundamental part of this. Considers themselves. Right. Well, they give it a name, de-influencing. And the funniest part to me is the videos. Oh, they say de-influence and they say you don't need to buy this or they neg a product that like, I'm going to de-influence you from buying this, whatever. Oh, it's the name. It's the same thing you do when you like speak negatively about a product. But it's so funny. Half the videos that I've seen about this, they start with, I'm going to jump on this de-influencing train. I had to jump on. No, you didn't. No, you didn't have to jump on. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> asked you. Maybe somebody in your comments was like, what do you think of de-influencing? And they were like, I'll de-influence you. What's your take on this whole thing, Jess? So I feel like it's, first of all, it's corny as hell. Second of all, <laughs> it's so unnecessary. It's like, A, nobody asked you. Then it's like, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. We have like almost 500 episodes of the show. Very rarely have we ever said, you know what product sucks? If we don't bring it up, We've not thought about it. We forgot to mention it or we don't like it. But like how nasty would it be if I was like, you know who really made the worst mascara? It's just bad form. I just feel like that kind yeah, of thing unless is like, something is like actively harming you or yeah. there was like a product recall, everybody's going to like something. Just because I don't like this mascara doesn't mean you won't. I think beauty is so individual. It also 
surprises me that people think that they can influence skincare purchases when I would take, I would go with you to like Blue Mercury or Ulta Beauty and based on your skin, I would pull together what I think would be a completely different regimen than mine. Right. It makes no sense to me, like the whole idea. Right. It's just, it's just, it's not, it's not for you. Which I know sounds silly. I know some of you out there are like, wait, your whole job is to edit the beauty world for us. But like, I don't think of my job like that. And if people that do, that's like my uncle at Thanksgiving, he's like, how's the lipstick blog? Like that thinks that literally what I do is tell people like, here's a great red lipstick to buy. It's like there there are some superior formulas. (laughs) There are, wait a second, hold on, hold on. There are some, (laughs) there are like some best of the best, but. Of course, of course. But. I just feel like who are you to come on from like down high and be like, this is terrible. Like what kind of public service are you doing? But the the other thing is, I think it makes people feel good to be as seen as somebody with like very, a long list of, I mean, we learned this from fashion magazines, like a list of don'ts or like the out list, this album sucks or I hate this. Like it makes you seem discerning. I'm not saying you can't have taste. I am like, I'm a Virgo. I have like a list of don'ts. We'll be here all night. So I'm, <laughs> I, I've i got them, but to be really public about them makes you seem like very discerning and cool. They get a little like, a little high out of it, a little kick out of being like. Jess, you've literally almost exactly reiterated some research I read on this. By the way, there are people studying this. There's three professors of marketing at Cardiff University who just did an analysis of influencers because people have been asking them about this thing. You know, they say it's the end of de-influencing. No, they say it's exactly the opposite. What you just described is what they're doing is using it as an opportunity to reassert their guru role and regain the trust through transparency and authenticity. Because when influencers first came about on YouTube, remember they would always be negging products. And it was like the magazines wouldn't do it, so the YouTuber will. Then as money flowed into that world, Uh you stopped hearing negative things. They got a brand deal. They're only talking about (laughs) their own products. We all saw it happen. What's happening right now is influencers trying to regain credibility. And when you, there's like psychology research behind this, when you say that something else isn't good, it makes people trust the things that you say are good better. Think about like the mean girl at high school. Like you, like some, oh, that kind of gene isn't cool. Yeah. And then she says what gene is cool. Now you believe her more that that gene is cool. Do you know yes. what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's like there's, there's plenty of marketing and psychology research behind this. And I just, I don't know if that's what influencers are trying to do specifically with this whole de-influencing trend, but I think there's a little of it to that. I think they're not dummies. People like to weirdly be told like what Tell me what not to do. And maybe it's because people are so afraid of getting things wrong. You know, like, this is out. This is in. I mean, that that's kind of not PC anymore. We're social, we're social but, creatures. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's, it, it's, a weird, it's a weird thing. Anyway, I really don't care what anyone is telling me what to buy or what to not buy, especially when it comes to beauty, because let's be real, we'll tell you what's going on. Meanwhile, you saw the title of this podcast and you were like, oh my gosh, we're going to see what Jess and Jen want to de-influence. No, you if could buy you whatever you want. Well, you knew we weren't going to come on here and be like, guys, you totally shouldn't buy XYZ blush because it's lame. No, I'm going to think no. more critically about the whole trend in general and tell you why I just think de I'm going to, you know what? I'm de-influencing, de-influencing. How about that? I think you should buy whatever you want. Stay tuned for Raisin Wong because we have some great recommendations. <laughs> Before we do that, though, we are going to do the news. This is just a fascinating conversation. And at some point, we're going to just have a daily podcast because this news cycle of beauty is moving so fast. But yeah, you ready to get into the show? Let's get into it. So funny. After that de-influencing chat, I realized this first news item I'm going to talk about might seem like de-influencing, but this is what I was talking about where we're going to give you the facts. Olaplex is being sued by 28 women who say the products cause hair loss. This is all we know at this point. Clearly, we've seen lots of rumors about hair loss, but the reasons that the plaintiffs are giving are several, and I'll just cycle through them. 
just so you know, if you're aware, if you use Olaplex, that this is going on, I am not saying any of these cause hair loss. First up, there's Lilial. This is a compound that was used in perfume sometimes as a fixative in fragrance and cosmetics. The EU mandated it be gone from products because there were concerns about an impact on fertility. So uh, most U.S. brands began taking it out when that happened back in 2021 or 20. It was 2021 or 2022. Olaplex has also removed it from its products. I believe that there were still some available for sale with that ingredient. People are concerned about that. P.S. Remember, that's a fertility affecting ingredient, not anything with hair loss. Okay, the other thing was the plaintiffs are saying that B5 or panthenol can cause an allergic reaction, some forms of dermatitis. Yeah, a lot of ingredients can. P.S. Guess what has B5 in it? Literally 52 million other shampoos. Panthenol is in a lot of things. I'm not saying that didn't cause hair loss or dermatitis for these people. I haven't seen that. I'm just saying that that is not, to me, anything surprising or new with the science of this issue. And then the last thing was there's these two ingredients, benzoate and ascorbic acid, which are pretty common in cosmetic ingredients. But when they're combined, this is according to the plaintiff's case, they could potentially turn into benzene which is a carcinogen. That might sound familiar to all of you because I talked about it when we were talking about sunscreens and that Valashore case where they tested aerosolized sunscreens and found benzene contamination. Again, it's not like companies put benzene in their products, but some ingredients can combine in certain formats to cause them. I don't know if that's what happened with Olaplex either. But all of this comes down to, if you're experiencing hair loss and you use Olaplex, I want you to be aware of this. I'm not saying that's why it is, but I also feel like I talked about this with our guest co-host, Chloe Hall, right before the holidays, about how like if any hair product of the moment gets big enough and popular enough, it seems like, listen, people are going through hair loss all of the time. It is so hard to pinpoint the causes. There are so many. And I've noticed again and again, the really big brands get the flack for it. So whatever the biggest brand is at the time often gets a lawsuit. Yes, I could be totally wrong. In a year, by the way, Olaplex, somebody, some scientist could tell us that there is absolutely cause for concern. So I don't want to say that's not the case. I just want you to be aware of it. Did you see that the CEO, Ju Wong, she went on their Instagram and released an official message? That must have been right before we recorded because I hadn't seen the official message yet. Please see Olaplex's Instagram for the official message. I just wanted to give you a little bit more on the science, let you know the lawsuit's going on. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want you to do your own research too. All right. Moving on, more hair news, slightly more positive. Friend of the pod, former guest, Jen Atkin, Force of Nature, episode 76. Ooh, let's do a quiz for Jess because she's so good at this. What was the name of Jen Atkin's episode of Fat Mascara? Do you remember? Louis the Ego. You guys, she never fails to amaze me. You are absolutely correct. I knew you would remember. <laughs> anyway, she's launched a new line called Main by Main Addicts, a little bit of a passion project. Jess, did you see the, you saw pictures of the products, right? Yeah, yeah, cute. Okay, guess what they reminded me of? Do you remember that? I think it was the 90s. It was, it was like a board game called like the Sleepover Party or like the dating game. And you had to like call up on a fake telephone. Girl Talk like, Dateline. Again, thank you to Jessica and her encyclopedic memory of... Beauty products and 90s and 80s tween girl culture. Yes. That's the vibe I was getting from it. Like very like... Girl talk, talking about Dateline. Girl talk. talk yeah. yeah. So they've got headbands, little zigzag headbands that remind me of like... The coils from the from the phone. Kind of. And she wants it all to be more affordable, which is something she heard from a lot of her Way customers. So the most expensive thing is a $75 triple ripple jumbo hair waver. So that's a hair tool. But things like a detangling brush are 18. The headbands are 10. There's like some other accessories. Looks really cute. So congrats to Jen on her Main by Made Addicts launch. Okay, so there's this brand. I'm just fascinated by this. It's called Estier de, Vi de Villat. It's basically a ceramics brand. They make ceramics the way they used to be made. They reissue things based on historical references. It's really cool. They expanded into scented products and candles here and there. Well, just last week, they dropped three cents, made with none other than Dominique Ropion, who just keeps coming up on this podcast. Like, I'm going to go to France and interview him someday. That are historically accurate. They also worked with a perfume historian, and a, she's also an anthropologist, to recreate, here are the three things they recreated. An Egyptian kiffy, which is like a ceremonial Egyptian fragrance, 
The other one is the Roman royal perfume. So there are historical texts saying like what Romans, royal Romans would wear, what kind of fragrances. She worked with those with Dominique to re, like recapture that. And the last one, this is so random to me, but the novelist George Sand mm-hmm. had, as one does as a 19th century author, she had her own perfume. Then, of course, she wrote down some notes on what that would be, and we could never smell it, but now we can, thanks to Astier de Villette. So if you're into fragrance like Jess and I, definitely check those out. All right, last up on a topic that continues to, like, fascinate me and scare the hell out of me, the metaverse. And I'm just going to have that incorporate AI and all of that, because I just keep watching how this is infiltrating beauty and... It's fascinating. So four dermatologists recently wrote to the editors of the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology to advocate for more experimentation in the metaverse to improve patient outcomes in cosmetic dermatology. Because they say the metaverse enables care providers to like practice procedures on like a lifelike mannequin, real life training across time zones. You meet up in the VR world. You learn how to do a little Botox. You have a better outcome. Maybe there's a scar removal procedure that you can share and learn there. I don't know how revolutionary this letter to the editors was because like, yeah, like obviously anybody who's like been around is like, how can we use the metaverse in our profession? So clearly cosmetic dermatologists are looking at it as well. But the thing that got me is just like, did you happen to see the people messing around with Bing's AI-driven chatbot In search Sydney? engine? You guys, go look up the transcript of the New York Times journalist who had a chat with a chatbot made by Microsoft about freaking existentialism is where it went. It got dark real quick. And I'm just going to say somebody, okay, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but like somebody over there got fired, I think last year, because they were worried, because they voiced publicly a concern that the chatbots were becoming sentient. That was like Google. <laughs> So here's my crazy theory, and then I'll leave you with this. If they're using all of the human knowledge that we have put online and everything we've created, including all of the movies we've created and books and dystopian novels, who's to say they couldn't learn to become sentient based on like freaking Fahrenheit 451 and iRobot and all the stories that where like technology becomes sentient? Like, I'm just saying, what if a year from now we're like, oh my God, my mascara just tried to kill me. That's all. (laughs) Just asking the important questions over here at Fat Mascara. I continue to watch the space because I don't know why it makes me so unnerved. Are you unnerved by all of that? I'm 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 very unnerved by all of this. And I don't think I'm a tech, I'm not like a huge tech person. I would never say I'm a technophobe, but I am so uncomfortable with all of this. I'm like, has nobody seen like 2001 Space Odyssey? Well, the chatbot did. And it was getting yeah. ideas. No, 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 guys. I really don't know. I'm just being facetious here, but I also, I'm also saying it out loud to you all. I was talking about this last night with Jeff as I was like, we were going to sleep. I was like, the implications with everything from like healthcare to like hotlines to just simple directions and it to journalism. They're out here writing articles with these damn things, giving people misinformation. I wasn't even going with journalism. I'm just thinking of just like simple. I mean, oh my God, it's so, it's so scary. It's really scary. Jess and I are real right now, just so you know. We promise never to be AI <laughs> generated. It's just me and her and you all in our ears together. But yeah, I, I think I more wanted to say it. I know it's not related to beauty quite so much, but just because it gives me this general unease and I wanted to see if anybody else out there felt that way. Seems like Jess does, but if you guys do, DM me right now. But maybe don't because the chatbot might read it when it's coming through the little <laughs> airwaves. I better shut up before I turn into a a conspiracy theorist. Okay, that's the news. See you on the other side for Raise a Wand. Hey, everyone. A little bit of a Jen life update here. So for those of you who don't know, Jen is learning German. She flies to Germany all the time. She has a stepson there, and she wants to be able to speak with the locals even better than she already does. So to speak better when she goes to Germany, she's using Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. So I want to do a little check-in with her. Jen, how's it going? Okay, when I started this Babbel journey, I thought to myself, this is going to be what I need to like reignite my German practice. 
boy, was I right. The best part about it is before when I first started learning German, I was doing like two hour classes at a time. These are 15 minute lessons. I can actually fit this into my life and do it every day. And I think it's better because I'm practicing my language every single day instead of like two times for a bunch of hours a week. It's like a little bit every day and it really helps. Babbel lessons were created with real language experts rather than AI. This is not like you're feeling like you're talking to a robot or playing games with a robot. It really feels like the way you would speak if you were speaking to a local. And it's not just German. That's what I'm learning, obviously. There's Spanish, French, Italian, 14 different languages. There's speech recognition technology, which is really cool. So like if my pronunciation is bad, the app tells me. It knows that like, oh girl, you're going to go to Germany and talk like that? No <laughs> one's going to understand you. Babbel's really getting me to sound much more like a local. And there are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to the lessons that I told you about, you can access podcasts, games, video stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to babbel.com and use the promo code FATMascara. That's babbel.com, code FATMascara. B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code FATMascara. Okay, everyone, it's time to raise a wand. Right now, I'm introducing our friend, Nicole, from D.C. Hi, Jess and Jen. This is Jen's sister-in-law, Nicole. I am calling to raise a wand to my close friend's business called Pedestrian Project. I know I just said it was run by a friend of mine, which it is, but I am raising a wand to it because it is fantastic. It's a super small line. It's like four or five products. I use the Walker's Cream and the Cracked Heel Repair. My feet were so dry, I, like, made rips in my stockings, and it totally fixed it. It's super simple. It's, like, a few really nice oils, like shea butter, a shea butter, a couple of oils, like some aloe juice, and the cracked heel repair is, like, a nice balm. They don't smell, like, gross and pepperminty or overwhelming. They just smell really nice, like a spa, like, lemongrassy. And they have a really nice product that is a CBD foot oil. It's a cream, and it is super nice for anyone who spends all day on their feet, dancers, anybody who's like a teacher, waiting tables, any nurses. It's a great gift. I gave it to my kids' teachers, and I think they really love it. It's really nice if your feet just hurt. And then it's called Pedestrian Project. And thanks so much for your show. Jess, I love you both. Bye. You did not miss here. That is indeed my sister-in-law. So I know she's talking about foot products, and we had asked for lip products. But this line is so good, and it's like $12, and $10 is one of the products, which is amazing. I love a good bargain, and you know we love feet here at Fat Mascara. We don't love feet. We have soft feet. feet. Yeah, soft feet, please. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> I'm not giving you homework anymore because I actually have some really good ones that have been coming in that aren't related to lips, so I want to, like, reopen it up to, like, fragrance, hair, skin, body, f- more foot products, lip if you like it, mascara if you want to. Tell us about the products you love. You want to raise a wand. Email us at info at fatmascara.com. Just send us a voice memo or call us 646-481-8182. So, Jen, you want to kick it off? Do I want to? Oh, I do. I have a new little lippy that tastes like creamsicle, and I am not mad at it. It is called Ula Henriksen Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment. I don't know if they're trying to get on the road peptide bandwagon. I'm fine with that. Like, you know how that happens. Like a a hit product comes out and everybody like does their version. The reason I love this is it's like a creamy balm. It's not, it's not shiny, waxy aquaphor and it's not glossy. It's like, I don't know how you can make like a creamy balm, but that's what it is. But the reason I love it so much is yes, it's softening. Yes. My lips feel good and moisturized, but it tastes like a creamsicle. Like those, I bet Friendly's had something like this that you used to whip up when you worked there. (laughs) Am I wrong? We d- we didn't have a creamsicle. We didn't have like pops. There should have been like a, a creamsicle flavored fribble though. Like orange sherbet and vanilla ice cream. We had that orange sherbet, yeah. Oh my God. Sometimes it's just like, it's one of those scents that's like comforting and nostalgic, refreshing, yet creamy. Like there's something, like I try and name me someone that does not like the taste of creamsicle. I can't You must be one. dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> that looks really good. Watch someone out there with like an orange allergy be yelling at me. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. I love you. Just this isn't for you. But it's really nice. Ula Henriksen Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment. I'm putting nice. it on right now. What do you have? Mine is not 
there's an expensive. So I've leveling up a bit. But guys, I don't know if I've talked about this brand before. I feel like I have. If I've not, then it's a tremendous miss from me. One of the brands on my short list for Moda was Sangre de Fruta, which I believe means blood of the fruit. It yes. is what? They're sending me a package today. I'm so excited. Oh, really? Oh. I cannot wait. I never get excited for packages. I've been tracking it with DHL because I know I'm getting one of their products and I'm very excited. Go on. They're so going. good. They're so good. I mean, I just want to give like a major shout out to the brand, like, but I guess I can talk about specific products. There's two products I really love. I mean, there's so, God, there's so many products I love. They they make really unusual products too. Like they make products that are very rich, whipped kind of body moisturizer, but their shampoo, Head of Roses Botanical Shampoo and Conditioner are beautiful. Their hand wash right now is doing so well, by the way. I mean, like, why am I talking to you? Like, I'm like business of fashion. Doing so well on Moda, but like they make a $48 hand wash and it's killing it because it's the most luxurious, beautiful hand wash and I can't get enough. And guys, it's huge. It's like a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous hand wash with a pump. And if you use hand wash like a normal person, you'll have it for a long time. The brand is off of the How coast. How do you use hand wash like an abnormal person? Well, like my child like pumps like 75. Well, then you better buy the hand wash refill set, which they also have with a big old refill yeah. on the side. So. We don't sell the refill at Moda yet, but we sell the hand wash. It's based off the coast of, I believe, British Columbia, and everything is made with beautiful natural ingredients. It's women-founded. You can tell the quality of the ingredients and the fragrances. There's one fragrance called Garden of Earthly Delights, which is a little nod to the Bosch painting, which I think is cool. It's just a quirky, cool, beautiful lady brand. You're so good at art history. In my head, I literally was just thinking about the 1970s herbal essences ad called Garden of Earthly Delights. That was my reference. But of course, no, yours is the no, true this artistic is reference. No, Bosch. So <laughs> um, it's a wild painting. If you've never seen it, do give it a Google if you, if you haven't. Anyway, love the brand. Love them. Really cool ladies. And just raise a wand. Raise a wand, yeah. All right. Well, get your beauty sleep. I like, I'm thinking back, I'm like, what the hell did I say about AI? I probably sounded like a wing nut. I'm sorry, guys. A wing nut. Like, it's, like no, I said, it's, it's a scary. long week. I'm a it's little- scary. Yeah, I don't know. So get your beauty sleep. We will see you on Friday. Oh, we will, oh, we'll get rebalanced on Friday. Trust me, we have a great guest for you. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's your reviews and feedback that help us make the podcast even better. Head over to iTunes to rate and review us or email your thoughts to info at fatmascara.com. We also want to answer your beauty questions and hear what products you love. To share a Razor One product with you or to ask a beauty question, email us at info at fatmascara. If you send it as a voice memo file, we can even share your voice on the podcast. You can also do that by leaving us a voice message. Our phone number in the United States is 646-481-8182. Thanks so much for listening. 